Hello, everybody. Welcome to Threads Podcast, episode number 39. We are almost to 40. Does that make us, like, almost over the hill? Is that the same? Mm, I don't know. I don't know either. Well, I'm Ben Crocker, uh, one of the usual hosts. My buddy Jason and I started this podcast a little over a year ago. And uh, as we've been gaining new followers and building some traction, we went from recording every other week to creating content for you on a weekly basis. And in between episodes that Jason and I do, our wives join us. So my wife Andy is here tonight. I'm, I say tonight because we're recording at night. Obviously, if you're listening at noon, it, it's not tonight. Uh, newsflash. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for that clarification. It was super necessary. I know. I'm kind of a nerd like that. Um, it is uh, Wednesday. No, it's not even Wednesday. We are so on top of things. It's Tuesday. It's night. Tuesday. It is maybe 10, 15, but that's the way it goes when you have older children. They don't go to bed until late. It's obnoxious. Yes. Well, and then they Jason... knock shower curtains down in Ugh. the bathroom. And... Yes, of course. Never a dull moment. While Jason loves having his kids go to bed early, I don't know how long that's going to last. Yeah, uh, enjoy it while you can. It is summer, so we're a little bit more lax, I think, but we have a teenager, so that, yeah. there's that. I stayed up late-ish with him last night, and he did have to get up early-ish this morning. So. And he was awful-ish this morning. Yeah, he there certainly was. There actually was no ish about it. It was pretty awful. It was. So basically what you're saying is it's your fault? Partially. I'll mm. take some ownership of it. But All right, then. he probably didn't have to call us mental. That was probably not. Probably not. Or say not, that we were you know, on something, because that's not really okay. No. So, well, we are recapping episode 38, and that was a, a fun episode with Jason's neighbor. They're not friends. They made that very clear from the very beginning, nor are their kids friends. So, Funny. kind of an interesting neighbor relationship. So. I was laughing about that. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, great it's way like, to start a podcast. Great way to start a podcast. We don't really know each other or like each other, but here we are. But Jason tried to witness to him, so there's that. <laughs> That's right. And he took him to church. Amazing. I don't do that very often, like invite people to church. I did tonight. They didn't come, but I did. Yeah. Our church is really rocking this community involvement thing. I'm really excited to be a part of a church that cares about the community. Yeah. Tonight was good. We did tonight, for those of you who do, who do not know, it is Tuesday, um, August 6th, and August 6th is National Night Out, or maybe it's just the first Tuesday in August. I'm not really sure. Um, but our church hosted a really big party, basically, and um, I went a few years ago, and it was not nearly as cool as it was this year. I mean, they had these like crazy trampolines with harnesses, and kids could do flips and jump, and the bounce houses, and a train, and a petting farm, and Hawaiian ice, and cotton candy, and amazing food, and it was crazy, don't you think? Yeah. And there was, was a ton of neighbors came, yeah. and I was super stoked to see like all these people that I didn't know and all these people who looked like my daughter. I mean, it was really, really cool. So yes, it definitely was. I'm trying to eat an ice cream bar and record and adjust sound levels and it just wasn't working. So I gave up on my Yasso bar thing. Did you finish it? No, I, I can't. I, I just can't. That was a dumb idea to try. Yeah, kind of. That's okay. But at any rate, the uh, National Night Out was a ton of fun. Um, I think I had a first tonight. That was the first time I stood in line for 25 minutes for cotton candy. Yeah, I think so too. But it was good though, and it was oh fine, and it gosh. was fun. It was so good, that cotton candy. Like They spun it. Like I just liked watching them make it. It was a lot of fun. I know I wanted to make it. Mm-hmm. So... And then on Sunday, our church also did a big community service project. We actually canceled our morning service, and everybody went out and did various service projects. 
And again, there was just a phenomenal turnout. Um, we put together a food pantry and a clothing pantry for um, kids at the uh, students and their families who attend the alternative high school here in Northview. So I thought that was a phenomenal service project as well. So really feeling good about our church. Yeah. It's definitely a good way to get plugged back in after kind of being lackadaisical in our attendance over the summer. Yeah. That's okay. But such is life. In Jesus the understands. Yes, he does. And I am grateful for that. Yes. So we interviewed Chris, and Chris is writing a book about time travel, or wrote a book. I think maybe it's still in pro. I can't remember the he specifics. He copy edited. It's been. It's being copy edited. That's so right. It's done, and he may tweak it a little bit more afterwards. So he's written it. Yes. And fun fact for all of those of you who are listening, you used to work in the publishing industry for a hot second. Yeah, I did. Woohoo. Yeah. So, um, anyway, wrote a book. It's a sci-fi book. And I'm, I'm finding out that I kind of like sci-fi. No. I know, right? I'm, I've been hesitant to admit it. I'm kind of like a closeted sci-fi fan. So does this mean now that you need, you need to watch Star Wars, maybe? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you could really bond with your son a bit more like, if you would. Maybe. He'd be delighted to sit there with you and watch They're all just 8 million of them. so long. Like I've never seen them. I don't like the whole space sci-fi. My kind of sci-fi is like Earth-based, where it takes place... In familiar settings, and there's at least somewhat of a storyline you can identify like with. Like heroes? Yeah, like heroes and like um, Stranger Things, right out of the 80s. Phenomenal show. Also watching Dark. I'm about to finish season two. Um, Did I watch the first episode of Dark with you? Yes, and you basically said, this is too dark, I don't like it. Ha, <laughs> dark. So, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Was, that, that was about the kid that like disappeared yes and there's subtitles or no subtitles it's funny because the original the original show was made i think in germany i thought it was in german so it's like their mouths don't line up right not always so yeah. it's in english still but that's right there are times where their mouths don't line up in me and my hearing impairedness i love to have the closed captioning on and it's a riot watching it on that show because they'll have the idea but the text that is written does not match the words coming out of their mouths. So that's adds another layer to it. But even though it's, you know, based in a different language, it's such a gripping show. I've really enjoyed it. So So basically Ben is coming out of the closet as far as his sci fi liking self. Yes. I mean this is threads where we talk about uh life unfiltered. So there it is, folks. I am a sci-fi fan. But I mean, you are kind of nerdy, and I mean that in the most loving way possible. So it it just it does make sense, just it given does. your love of technology and all of those other things. I don't like sci-fi. The only sci-fi that I have ever liked is Spaceballs, <laughs> which that's a spoof <laughs> on all things Star Wars, and I only know things about Star Wars because I've watched Spaceballs so many times as a kid. Wow. And the other the other back like Back to the Future. We yes. did rent those from the library. Miracle doesn't seem as interested <laughs> as I am. I told her to get them and that we could watch them together cuz I feel that those are epic and that all everyone should watch them. Yeah. But I don't think she's going to understand. Probably not. It's kind of and not her. By the way, thing. didn't he go to like 20 What year did he go to? There's the so future. much debate about it. I don't know, but it's not anything like that. I think hey, it might have been 2018. I thought it was 2047. I don't know. But we do not have flying cars. No, we don't. I wish we did. And I still want those Nikes that like dry and stuff and the jacket. Like that was so cool. Mm hmm. And I'm, hello, hoverboard. I'm, I'm going to Google it. But we do have hoverboards now. They don't really hover, though, they're on wheels. There's still hover... No, there's actual hoverboards. Oh. Well. 
Well, one of the things that I identified with in Chris's story was the fact that the main character was a Sevi. And that's mm-hmm. a term I learned from my son who just finished seventh grade. And, it was 2015. Sorry, because uh, it was 30 years ahead. Got and 30 it. years behind. Yes. Interesting. Sorry. It was 85? Yeah, it Dang. was 1985. And then they went back to 1955. And then they went to 2015. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Yes, our son last year was a Sevi. Yes. And the main character in this book is a Sevi. And not only that, but part of the story, like the genesis of the apocalypse, somehow involves a 7 Eleven. And that was like the highlight of my seventh and eighth grade years. Wow. I was was growing up, I was so sheltered. So sheltered, in fact. That one night I snuck out of the house, gosh darn it, wearing my finest duds and rode my bike that my kids now ride, which I just love. Uh, I rode my bike on a school night, uh uh-oh, at like 9.30, past bedtime, I snuck out and went to 7-Eleven. And I was trying to carry too many things back with me and I fell off my bike. And he ripped his pants. And I ripped my pants. And to this day, I remember something that my aunt, and they lived really close by, and my mom both said to me the next day, Ben, your sins will always find you out. Wow. I was like, hmm, busted. Is that kind of like what I tell Stefan and what Grandma Janine tells Stefan about uh, if you do something, we pray that you'll get caught right away? Yeah. Same idea. Yeah, I think that is the same idea. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, just little things like that. I actually really do want to take some time and read the book. I have the manuscript. It's in Word format. It's a little tricky to read, but I think I want to read it. I think I might enjoy the story. So. Cool. You do you. And no offense to you, Chris. I just, I just don't. I don't read a lot of fiction anyways. And I probably wouldn't. Yes. I think the most science fiction books I've ever read were the Left Behind books. <laughs> and those weren't really even science fiction. Oh, they were something fiction. They were they were something. And some people considered those to be like the gospel truth of what was actually going oh, to happen. Gosh. I can't even believe I bought into that propaganda. Hmm. I'm kind of a different person now. But did you really buy into it or were you just amused by it? I I don't know. I don't know if I want to say. Oh boy. I mean, I don't know. I I devoured those books. Like, I couldn't wait for the next one to come out. And the writing is so poor. That's one thing I've always noticed about it. And then in the critiques of those books, minus the subject material, the critiques are always about the sentence structure. Yeah. It's not the greatest. When did those come out? Like, probably 20 years ago? Okay, maybe I was... Maybe I was, too. I can't remember. But... yeah. I don't know. And the movies were even worse. <laughs> so Kurt Cameron. Kurt Cameron. Yeah. Ugh, oh, know? man. I remember leading a youth group all-nighter, and like the crux of the all-nighter was watching Left Behind. Oh, my gosh. I don't think we did an altar call afterwards, but knowing my... Like scare the Jesus into people. Yeah. That's not what we want. Anyway, yeah. that was another thread. I know. I, I could. That's a long thread that... Is still unraveling. So, yeah. Um, one thing that you mentioned from the episode was the whole counselor versus therapist terminology. You guys do this all the time, and Jason gets on you. This is not the first time that you guys have discussed this. Oh, is on it? the podcast? No, you. There was another time too that he's like, "Why do you call it a counselor? It's a therapist." Would you correct, give us the correct terminology? Well, I think, I think it depends on what you're doing. So counselor can be very vague, right? You can go see a financial counselor. True. Okay. You can see a biblical counselor. You can see a biblical counselor for biblical counseling. And that's scary as what if you have a mental health issue happening. Because somehow the Bible doesn't really give treatment plans for bipolar disorder. Would you go see a biblical counselor if you had diabetes? No, I'd go see my doctor or a naturopathic doctor. 
or, or a doctor to get insulin so you don't well, yeah. die. I mean, there's that. So I think in the terms that you guys are speaking about, when you talk about mental health, I think therapy is the correct term. Okay. For mental health treatment, you could say that, or you could say therapy. I don't, I don't, I don't like the term. I don't know. I don't like the term counseling because I think it just doesn't give merit for what it actually mm. is. Yeah. Because it is therapeutic. Like you talk about the therapeutic relationship and a therapist. It's a therapist. You're going to therapy. I feel like we're in a therapy office right now. You're on a recliner with a blanket and I'm sitting on my office. So chair. are you the therapist right now? Kind Would of. Did you therapize me? No, that's your job. I know. But, yeah. Speaking of, when are you going to therapy again? I don't know. I feel like I really like Tom. Don't get me wrong. But every time we finish up, he's like, call me when you need me. And I don't know when I need him. I don't have a real good answer for that. Okay. So, I don't know. Maybe I need to find somebody that's like, you're coming back in two weeks. And I'll be like, okay. Yeah. But for him to just say, call me when you need me. And he always gives me a hug. And he's a great guy. And he gives you a hug? Yes. That's really interesting. I know. My therapist doesn't give me a hug. And I've been working for, with her for almost four years. Actually, it has been four years, I think, now. It's recent. I mean... Like the last two times. I don't went. think I've ever hugged her. That's really interesting. Why is that interesting? Because you rave about her. and Yeah, because she's a badass, but she's not, I don't know, that's just not her style. Hmm. It was a little awkward the first time we both stood up after the session ended and he just, usually it's a handshake and that's normal, but this time he was like, can I give you a hug? That's weird. I'm sorry. I think that's filling a, a need for him. That's mm. weird. Okay. That's really weird. Well, bear in mind and remember that it was your counselor, sorry, therapist. No. That no. recommended I see no, Tom. No, 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 no. She said he would be okay oh. to see. And then when I told her that you weren't seeing him, when you were seeing him weekly, it was good. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, be aware he might drop him as soon as he starts doing well again. That's what he does with people. Mm. Well, so that's kind of what he did. That's kind of what's happening. And she actually predicted it. So she actually recommended somebody else. Mm -hmm. But your insurance doesn't. Yes. He doesn't I did reach insurance. out to that person. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Maybe you need to find me a new one. Okay. Well, we'll work on that. Mm -hmm. The conversations that we have. But because this is, of this podcast. This is important, though. I it mean, it's important stuff. Is. And Jason is working on his stuff. And I give him a whole lot of credit. And I know he loves his therapist and thinks that she's fantastic. So, I don't know. Maybe you should go see Jason's therapist. I've always... I don't know. I've thought of... I've, okay. I'm trying to remember. I have seen one female therapist. One way back at cornerstone oh well they were all women there though yeah, right i think so yeah i mean i don't know so i've treated some guys and it's been fine mm -hmm. i guess i'm open to it i don't have a whole lot of female leadership in my life i do at work robin she's a badass she keeps the whole company in line um but other than her and other than you, I don't really have a strong presence of females in my life. Well, there's a lot of good female therapists out there. Yeah. I mean, there's good men, too. I just think there's more. It's like a female-dominated... Oh, it absolutely is. ...profession, for sure. I mean, I went to a semester of grad school for therapy. Yeah. But... And I was definitely one of the few men. I believe there may have been six of us. I still think you could be good at that. I'm certainly open to it, but just where we are in life at this second, it's probably not the greatest fit. Eh. But down the road. I mean, I finished grad school while we adopted a child. <laughs> That's true. So we're three years away from when she moved in. Yep. You know, I mean, it was all good. I don't know. I, I feel like maybe that's a post 
teenage years endeavor. That's probably true. And then maybe we could o- open a practice. That would be fun, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, Anyways, um, we digress, but we think that mental health is really important. And Jason is correct. It's called therapy. It's not... I don't know. It's not that's my that's my preferred term. Some people say counseling, and I don't think that's bad, but I call it therapy. But what is KREP? KREP? Yeah. Like the accreditation program that George Fox went through? Wasn't that counseling is like the first word? Yeah. So apparently it's not So like counseling totally psychology is a thing, but I, I don't know. I think I just like the term therapist better than counselor. Hmm. I, I, that's what I say. And that's what I, what, like what I tell the kids, like your therapist, we're going to therapy. I started a hashtag everyone. I don't know if it's really gone viral or not, but <laughs> it must not have because I don't know what it is. You do too. It's hashtag healthy people go to therapy uh, because you heard the story. I told miracle. She said, why do I have to go to therapy? And I said, because do you want to be happy and healthy? And she's like, well, yeah. And I said, healthy people go to therapy. It's true. And she goes, healthy people go to therapy? And I said, yeah. And she's like, oh. Hmm. So then I asked her again. I said, why do we go to therapy? Because healthy people go to therapy. I said, <laughs> yes, exactly. So we went to Starbucks before therapy and had a little date. And I posted a, pic- a really cute picture of her eating a scone or something. Oh, yes. I remember this. And it said, this. hashtag healthy people go to therapy. It's true. And it is true. It's like, it shouldn't be anything different than anything else. Mm-hmm. It should be as normal. I saw a great meme the other day and it said, I was talking to my kid about going to see a psychologist to help my brain. And it was a normal conversation and it wasn't anything different than me talking about going to the doctor for yeah. a, a physical. Absolutely. And I feel like... In our house, at least, I, I feel like we've normalized it pretty well because Miracle will be like, oh, it's 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 Wednesday. Are you going to therapy today? Like, <laughs> yeah. did you go? Yeah. Can I come with you? No, you can't come <laughs> with me and try to listen to my session. I don't think so. I'm not going to talk about you the whole time. Yeah. But, you know, she knows that I go and I'm trying to normalize that for our kids to just go. It's OK. Like, it's mm-hmm. an OK thing to do. It, yeah, for sure. Um One of the things that we had discussed already was the fact that I lack, you know, a strong presence of females in my life. And one of the points that Chris talked about in his um, interview on the podcast, um, he, in the beginning of the story, he had really intended on having just male characters. And then he shared his idea with his daughter and his daughter sounds about as blunt as Miracle is. Uh-huh. She was like, uh, Dad, nobody's going to read it if there's no girls in it. You're not going to have any girl readers. <laughs> is I, that accurate? I totally thought that that was something Miracle would say. Yeah. Is that accurate that girls won't read it? If yeah. There's, I don't know. It depends on the girl. I feel like that's kind of general. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't read it, but I wouldn't read if there were girls in it either, because I don't like that right. kind of stuff. But, but if it was just a book in general of a genre that you do like, and there's no female character, or at least no female lead characters, does it hold your attention as a female? I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't... I don't maybe I'm bad, and I don't read enough. <laughs> Well, I certainly don't. I mean, I'm st- sitting here looking at our bookshelf and There's many more books downstairs, yes. though. These are not This is not. Well, I'm just a saying summary, but they're all like self-help books or like religious books. Yes. There's not any fiction. We, I don't buy fiction. I, I get it from the library. You have like two. Yeah, well. But so I don't know if that's fair. I, yeah, I guess the books that I read usually have female lead characters in them because I guess you're right. I do relate more to that. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. But I, but I left. I read the Left Behind books, and that was like a male yeah, character. Yeah, was Buck. Buck and what was the guy's name? Ray or something? Yeah, the, the pilot. pilot. Oh man! Ugh. If you haven't read those books, no need to go read them. But just a quick synopsis: it's essentially the right-wing conservative Christian approach to how the apocalypse is going to go down when Jesus comes back. 
And don't get me wrong, I certainly believe scripture that, you know, he's going to return and it's going to be a surprise. And I know that he's not just left us here to fend for ourselves. And I know he's coming back. But I just don't think it's like that in Left Behind. Um, I think it's a whole lot more complicated and, um, yeah, not quite the Left yeah. Behind fiasco. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it'll be really, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. And I think, too, one of my reasons why I like sci-fi is, let's be honest, I mean, there's a lot of sci-fi in the Bible, like the plagues and, like, water turning to blood and frogs showing up and... um Water turning to wine. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty sweet. So, I don't think that's fiction. I think that actually did happen. And I love stories like that. And I think just because of my upbringing, I feel like that kind of plays into why sci-fi appeals to me. Do you know any... And that might sound really, I don't know, arrogant asking this question. But do you know any females that are into sci-fi? I mean... It seems like it's a very male-dominated genre. Probably Tabrina. That's true. I mean, they're they're out there. Yeah. They're out there for sure. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, and kind of along that same vein of thought, Chris's daughter, uh, I asked him if she had read the manuscript for his book, Switchers. And... Um, he said that she had not. And her reasoning was because she didn't want to read it and realize that she didn't like it and she didn't want her dad to feel bad. And um, I thought that was really interesting and it kind of yeah. made, made me think about me and how I take criticism. Um, his daughter was so concerned for her dad, she didn't want him to feel bad or deal with her criticism and he was like, I wish you would just read it and tell me so I knew. Um, so that just made me curious. How well do you think I take criticism? I think it depends on what it is. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, criticism from you. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well... Tonight, for example, you couldn't find your stupid shorts downstairs. Yeah, well. You kind of pulled a man thing. So, I mean, that didn't go You super told great. me they're on the dryer. I said, or by the dryer. I heard on the dryer. So, I went downstairs and I looked. See, but right now, dryer. he's not even taking the fact that he, he, he didn't think to look anywhere else no, downstairs. Because you told this me is, to look This on is the what dryer. it's like with your son, too. <laughs> Your son. Uh, I can tell where he gets it from a mm -hmm. little bit. I don't know. Do I criticize you a whole lot? Not often. I don't know. No. I think sometimes you get a little pouty. Me? Pouty? Yeah, or a little moody. Mm. Like tonight when I couldn't find any headphones, I thought they had to be actual over-ear headphones for it to to work. And I said... Fine, Whatever. I'll just do it, I'll just my, do it myself. I, I'll just do it myself. And I said, stop playing the victim and give me a minute. Because our amazing daughter stole my headphones and I don't know where she did with them. So well, Who knows where they are? Well, they were in her bag, so I have no idea where she stuck them. But the point is, I probably need to order another pair. Yes. Again. Indeed. Anyway, I digress. Criticism, I don't know. Do you get it from Jason? I know you do sometimes. Oh, yeah. Pretty regularly. <laughs> and sometimes it's unsolicited. Like, he'll have feedback from me on something. And I'm just like, where did that come from? And we've talked about it. And it's, you know, it's just one of those things. When you're in a relationship with somebody in a friendship and you're working on things together, like podcasts, mm -hmm. it's just natural that he's going to have feedback from time to time. Um but it's interesting because he gives me a whole lot more constructive criticism, feedback, etc. I don't give him very much. And maybe I should start. Probably. I feel like he listens and interacts with me on a very critical level sometimes. And I just don't do that. That's not my natural bent when I relate to people. 
do you feel like I'm a critical person? Mm, no. Yeah, it's just not really my style. But I think maybe it could be, or it should be a little bit more. I tend to shy away from confrontation sometimes. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Um, let's see. Back to the therapy thread. Uh, Chris was telling a story about how when he was in the reserves with the Navy, oh, yeah. he was deployed to Iraq. And upon returning, he was on the base and having some conversation with another reservist. And this reservist, day after day, would pronounce his last name incorrectly. And one day, Chris had enough. And he was just like, shut the F up. My last name is Kilcano. I think I said that right. Um, and he was essentially reported and... Um, the Navy required that he see a therapist and how crazy is this? The therapist that he had to go see happened to be Tim Tebow's mom. That's so weird. I know. That's so, so weird. Did you know his mom was the therapist? Uh, I don't really know anything about Tim Tebow other than he's like the poster child for the right and playing <laughs> football. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I think. They had valid reason to send him to therapy, though. I think so, too. And he said that that was, I, th I think it might have been the only, and if not the only, then one of the few times that he's actually gone to see a therapist. And again, Jason and I really try to normalize therapy as a thing that everybody should do. Um, yeah. I mean... Most people go to the dentist every six months to get their teeth cleaned. And then there's Except people like you me. Who are avoiding it and you've been on my dental insurance for the last however long, but you won't go. I know. And I've been paying extra so I can carry you. Hmm. Just saying. Maybe I should make an appointment. And Doctor Smiley. People get a physical every one to two years. I've been pretty good with that. And so it's like we take care of our bodies and our mouths and you know, things like that. But why don't we tend to our mental health? Why isn't that something that's stressed? And I just have to believe that if it were something that the general public was receptive to, I think a lot of the ails of society may be minimized, not completely eliminated. But I think if people are dealing with their shit, there's going to be less shit in the world. Maybe. So but maybe that's my find, idealistic. Maybe. They've got to find actual therapists that are going to make them deal with their actual shit and not just blow sunshine up their asses either. Because there's a lot of those feel good folks out yeah. there, too. It's hard to find a good therapist. How do you feel about online therapy? I think that's crap. Yeah, I keep Facebook's always listening, obviously. And because I have conversations on the podcast and in regular life about mental health and because I've Googled counselors therapist, whatever, Facebook knows. And so one of the ads I regularly see is for online therapy. Yeah. You know, I don't have a problem with like Skype therapy if you've already established a relationship with that That's therapist. That's a big if. But, you know, I've done a phone session with a client before, but we'd already had that therapeutic relationship set up prior to that. But yeah, I, mean, I think how do you... just interacting with someone online, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah, it speaks a lot to our culture of yeah. wanting immediate and being able to text a, a therapist when you're having a rough spot. Yeah. It's like, how is that therapist going to actually help you in that moment? Yeah, I keep seeing those ads too, like, today was really rough again. Okay, yeah. so let's let's figure out why today was rough, and let's go see somebody who can actually guide you through it instead of somebody throwing stuff at you. And how do you know it's the same person every single time? Exactly. How and do you build that therapeutic you relationship? You really just can't. I yeah. think it's a, a, a shoddy excuse for therapy. Well, what about people who live in highly remote areas and... That may be one of their few options for seeing a therapist. Is there ever a space for it or is it just kind of like, you know, that's not advisable? I think 
Skype would be better. That would be more advisable, in my opinion. Sure. Because you could actually see the person's face. Yeah. Body language yeah. is like 90% of it. It is. And I think, yeah. I mean, there are people that live in remote spaces. Sure. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't think this online texting chat therapy really would be effective, in my yeah. professional opinion. Well, that's good. Um Back to Tim Tebow's mom. I don't know. I feel like if I realized that I was seeing the mother of some famous person, I'd kind of want to switch to somebody else just because I don't want any preconceived notions or ideas that, you know, based on this celebrity and now I'm seeing his mom, I just feel like that would add a, a weird layer to it. But maybe. Yeah. I mean,. It would take away a little bit from the anonymity. Is that how you say it? You think anonymity? Yes, something like that. Of the therapist or of you as the client? Of the relationship. I don't know. Why does it have to be an anonymous relationship? Well, I don't want the whole world knowing that I'm seeing a counselor. Well, why would they know that you're seeing a counselor? I don't know. A therapist. She might tell... Tim she, Tebow. No, she's not going to tell <laughs> Tim Tebow. She shouldn't tell him anything because it's a confidential relationship. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's I just don't a think weird thing. It has to do anything with the price of tea in China. Okay. I mean, if she's a good therapist, then she's a good therapist. Clearly, she's good if she's treating people in the Navy reserves yeah, and like working sure. with veterans and things. Like, you've got to know your shit to be able to do that. So she must. Yeah. I don't know. That's true. I don't know. I just have a thing about famous people but they're people just like us they They, go poop what did uh, there was a back when i worked at the publishing company (laughs) gosh that's so weird but we would always like get nervous when authors would come and one of the ladies that i worked with she would say you know what they put their pants on one leg at a time too (laughs) like they're just humans yeah they're just people and for whatever reason they have a platform that has Enabled them to reach the masses. What happens if you and Jason get famous? You mean when? Jason Are you going to have famous? a hard time with that too? Probably if we'd ever reached that point, but I don't know. Do you think we're going to be famous one day? I don't know. <laughs> don't don't set me up like that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, all right, and one of the questions that we ask. Well, first of all, I want to get your feedback on the matter. Um, From the beginning, I've said if I'm going to do a podcast about life, my faith is important to me, Mm -hmm. and I want to include it, and I want to talk about it, even if it feels a little awkward. And Jason has always been a little bit hesitant to that, uh, because he says it's just really hard for him to put into words um, what his faith is like to him. For me, I don't have trouble with that. I went to college and studied ministry. Like, I I know the lingo. I was raised in it all my life. Uh, Jason was raised in a faith-based home as well, but it was a very different experience. So all that to say, I love asking our guests the questions about God. Like, who do you think God is? Or how would you describe God? Jason is always kind of like, are you sure we should ask that? So what are your thoughts? Should that be like a standard question or is that a danger zone? I mean, it depends. It depends on who it is, I think. I don't know. You can ask. I think people have ideas about it. And if you're being true to yourself and you feel like that's something important that you want to know about someone. It absolutely is. But what's your motivation for wanting to know? Curiosity. Because how I've come to know God and who I know God to be in my life. I want. I got to be careful how I say this, but it's not always going to be the same as how somebody else sees God. I mean, if you were to have ten people, you know, there's an analogy. I'm going to really mess it up, but um, the saying goes: ten people were asked to describe an elephant, and one person put their hand on the trunk. And they described the elephant based on what the trunk felt like. And then there was another who put his hand on the tail, one on the foot, one on the ear. I mean, 
all different parts of the elephant, they're each equally part of the elephant, but each was different as well. So, and just like how the Bible talks about the body of Christ, you know, we're all different. So, mm-hmm. I'm just naturally curious. I want to know. What Is it kind of like the God. shack where, you know, God's like a black lady mom and yeah. then, you know, he's, I can't remember all the different like interpretations of God, but it was like three different people. Yeah. You know, that movie got so much hate because people thought it was so cheesy or what, I don't know what the criticism was. I just know it did not do well on Rotten Tomatoes. I loved that movie. That movie messed with my head. Oh man. I loved it so much. Like, I don't usually cry in movies. I might get a little teary-eyed. But I was sitting next to you, and I was pretty weepy through various parts of that movie. It was so, so good. Yeah, it was good. So, my motivation for asking the question is I'm just genuinely curious. I want to know, you know, what's your take on this? And I think everybody has a different take, and that's what makes it so interesting to me. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, if you're pushing people, you know, or like shoving it down their throats, that's completely different. And you're not. I don't know. It's just like, how do you see things or? Yeah. Yeah. And I thought Chris did a really good job of of answering it. Yeah, he did take some time to explain about Jason witnessing to him and bringing him to church. It was very, very cool. Good job, Jason. Seriously. Way to invite your neighbor to church. I need to do that. But Chris said that his definition of God is the forces, everything... Okay, sorry, let me back up. It's the forces and is everything and is in everything at all times. Yeah, he kind of, he talks sort of about Star Wars, right? Yeah, he did. It was like the like force. The force. May, so, the, may the force be with you. And it, he said it's what makes a person want to help other people when they see someone in need. And working together for the common good. And he also talked about like how it doesn't have to just be like science or God. Yeah. It's like God and science. Like God, maybe, yeah, I mean, you know, it says that God created on the first day, but we don't even know what a day was. That yes. that could be like hundreds of years could in between. And maybe we really did evolve from monkeys. Maybe he was like, oh, this is this is not like I'm getting it to how I want it. We yeah. don't we don't know. Yeah. I mean, um, if you look at like stories of transformation throughout scripture, they start as one thing and they end up as another. Like Saul, who right. hated hated Christ and hated Christians and murdered Christians and tried to stop the spread of the gospel, he murdered people, but then God miraculously got a hold of his life and transformed him into the opposite. So maybe Aww. there is the possibility of us being transformed from something else. And it just goes to show what God can do in our lives. Right. Well, and it, like back in the old Testament, like Methuselah, you know, he was so old and he was like 969 years old. What is that? You yeah. know, like how, how are they measuring time then? Yeah. Is it the same as as now? And so I just think that there there's so much room for what we don't understand. We have such a limited understanding. We do. And there are some people who treat Genesis as if it was a textbook, a science textbook, but it's not. I mean, the whole writing style of the book of Genesis is very poetic. It's not a literal, this is what happened. It's very poetic and it has verse and flow to it. And a lot of people look over that fact. Isn't that the whole like concept of intelligent design? Like yes. that God made all this scientific stuff happen, right? Yes. Not that just, yeah. I mean, you know, even like the Big Bang Theory, well, something had to cause this explosion. Exactly. For it right? to all come into formation the way it did, it requires, there has to be. There has to be something. Like, there's no chance that all of this is just accidental. Right. Like, there's got to be some form of intelligent design involvement. So, I feel like Chris's answer to the God question was pretty in line with universalism. Just the whole thought of God is everything and God is in everything. Mm-hmm. 
I don't think that's wrong. I think it's just... It's just part of it. It's part of it. Exactly. I don't think it's all of it. I think it's part of it. Uh, So I think he's on the right track. And, you know, I hope that as he grows and transforms and, you know, I hope his view of God also evolves and transforms and um, I hope that for all of our guests. So um, let's see. But at the same time, I, it's not that I disagree with him. I feel like he's, as you said, he's got the gist of it and that's definitely part of who God is. So, um, yeah, I think I'm on the same page with him just with the caveat of, but wait, there's more. Hmm. So, um, one final thought, uh, to wrap up our recap of that episode one of the things that we started doing with our guests is giving them a chance to just throw some parting words out, you know, for the hundred or so people who listen to each episode, what do you want to say to them to close out? And Chris had some really good thoughts and the main crux of his, of his closing message was this, when it comes to a project, like writing a book, just, start. It's like, put your pen to paper and just start writing. You know, whatever the the idea or challenge or thing that you want to do in life, I know for me, it is so easy to just think about it and overthink it and never really get started. So I thought that was a really good yeah. uh, idea from him. Yeah. And that's definitely what Jason and I did with this podcast. You know, a year ago, we met at um, Graydon's Crossing and just started brainstorming and a week later we sat down and recorded our first episode and it's definitely brought some very interesting people including Chris into my life and I think it's really challenged me to grow as a person and all it took was us just saying okay we're going to do this so yeah. for all of the listeners out there I think those are also my parting words for you agreeing with Chris that uh, whatever your idea is, whether it's writing a sci-fi book with a main character who's in seventh grade and likes to go to seven 11 where the apocalypse starts, whatever your idea is, just find a way to start baby steps and see where it takes you. So, um, Thanks for listening, and thanks to my wonderful wife for staying up past your bedtime to do this. You're but uh, you don't have to work tomorrow. No. That's I, nice. I don't, but I have to run kids around in the morning. Yeah, you're the the kid's Uber driver the tomorrow. Uber driver in the morning, unfortunately. But then you can go back to bed. Sort of. I have therapy tomorrow oh, morning right. as well at nine. Because you go weekly. And I It's do. a regular thing. It is a regular thing. It's my self care maintenance, and I I need it. Yeah. It's okay. Well, maybe I need to find somebody who's not just going to say, "Up, oh, call me when you need me." Yep. So that's that's my challenge to you. Ah, maybe I'll, I'll go see your therapist. I don't know if she would see you. I just got a look from her. Like, it might be a conflict of interest. It probably would. I'm only kidding. I'll ask her for some more ideas. <laughs> All right. Yes, because I'll be the first to admit, Tom may think that I've, you know, improved. And I certainly have. He oh, gave yeah. me a lot of good tools, but the maintenance piece just isn't there. I think I think CBT is good stuff. I think, though, it's kind of like a Band-Aid. Like, it, it's sort of like if you have, you know, an open wound, you know, you're putting a Band-Aid on it, but it's almost like it's good for that. Like, it's like kind of like first aid, but I think some of the more deeper therapy, like psychodynamic style therapy where you're talking about things is more like addressing, okay, why did you get the cut in the first place? Hmm. It's like, yeah. okay, well, I have this cut, so how do I deal with it? And how do I have the skills to deal with this each day? Whereas, why do I keep getting cut? And like, yeah. where do these keep coming from? And how can I get to the point where I'm not cutting? I'm not going to get cut anymore. Yeah, that's so good. That's my 
deep analogy for 11 p.m. Right. That was really good for 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's what I do. Analogies. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, Jason and I are going to be sitting down. I think we are kind of putting a pause on the interview so that we can focus on doing some episodes with just the two of us. So that'll be coming up. And then as we look forward to Labor Day, um, last year we kind of started a tradition of having not only Jason and I and not only my wife and I, but... Jason and Megan and Andy and Ben on the episode. And last year was a ton of fun and I can't wait to see what happens this year. So stay tuned for that coming up. And as always, you can look for us on uh, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. And do us a favor and uh, leave a review. That's where we get a lot of our sway. It really helps move the needle and, gets us exposure and all that fun stuff so all right well thanks for being here and uh see you next time Ta-da.